doesn't matter whether you board regularly or have never so much as touched a skateboard, Tony Hawk Ride is a bad game. The skateboard peripheral that comes with the game is sometimes overly responsive, sometimes not responsive enough. Frankly, it just doesn't work right. And the game built around it doesn't feel complete. The menus are poorly assembled, skating areas are small, and what's there is a stripped version of what the series has already done. In other words, Tony Hawk Ride expects a lot out of you without giving anything back. It's rarely fun to play, and at 120 bucks, it's a big old ripoff. Hey, Tony Hawk here. I just want to introduce you to the Ride Controller. So let's talk about this controller. It's impossible to separate the game from the board. You can't play Ride without it, and you can't play anything else with it for the time being. It's pretty sturdy, so the board seems more than capable of handling whatever punishment you throw at it. But while it's solid, there are big issues with the way your movements register in the game. Manuals feel pretty good and usually register pretty well. Everything else can be a big problem. For example, to pull off a tilt trick, you have to pop the nose or tail into the air and tilt the board while all your weight rests in one place. But the game constantly registers tilts as flips. There are also big problems with the moves that require use of the sensors on the front, back, and sides of the board. Figuring out timing for moves like finger flips and grabs is tough because everything that happens on screen occurs a half second after you perform your own move. It makes timing a big mess. You'll often fail to pull off the move even when the on-screen icon shows that you're activating the sensor. Other times, your on-screen skater will show the proper animation, but you won't get credit for it for no discernible reason. The sensitivity issues aren't a huge problem if you're free skating. At least then, you don't have to worry about doing the right tricks at the right time. But most of the areas are rather small and aren't much fun to skate around in. Challenge mode is where the big frustrations lie. It's not so tough early in the game, even when the frequent moments when tilts register as flips and ollies show up as manuals. Later on, though, you need to string a bunch of unresponsive tricks in a row. Advanced tilt tricks, finger flips, and transitioning to a board slide by flipping your own board 90 degrees will all be combined into a single, frustrating challenge. Doing it on confident or hardcore difficulty levels means that you must also be mindful of turning, which is the equivalent of removing any ounce of fun you might have been having. But even if you're tooling around and don't need to pull off any specific trick, the discrepancy and the delays between your own motion and the on-screen action dull the entire experience. As I mentioned before, you can't really separate the board from the game. But even if the board were to function perfectly, it wouldn't overcome some of the game's other problems. The menus are thrown together and badly organized. For example, you can't escape from the challenge menu once you enter it. You actually have to begin a challenge and pause it to access the other menus. While you can navigate most menus using the board, if you qualify for the scoreboard, you have to reach for a standard controller to continue. Then there are the wonky in-game physics, the same ones that allowed us to skate on the ceiling. The modes are what you'd expect, trick, speed races, free skating, and challenges. You skate in several different cities, like Chicago and Barcelona, but you'll probably be too mindful of your skating to notice the bland backgrounds. That is, until the game pauses for a brief half second out of the blue, or you start to curse the long loading times. The bits of fun you'll get out of Tony Hawk Ride will probably come from vert skating. No part of Ride offers the freewheeling joy of previous games, and the exaggerated fun of signature moves is gone. But there's still fun to be had catching air on the halfpipe, simply because this is where you get the most on-screen action with the least amount of frustration. Maxing out your style meter adds a little visual flair to the moves and increases your point totals. And if you're really proud of your moves, you can go online and compete with other players. But there are very few people playing, so you won't find it difficult to rise to the top of the leaderboards assuming you can find a single competitor. Maybe you aren't a skater and the casual semi-on-rails difficulty level sounds appealing? Don't be fooled. Even then, Tony Hawk Ride isn't very friendly. It even asks you to do tricks it never covers in the included training videos, leaving you to figure it out all on your own. At least with vert skating and trick modes, you can flounder around and make something happen on the screen that looks cool. But when Tony Hawk Ride asks you to get specific, it falls completely apart. It just doesn't offer the precision and consistency it needed to be fun. Tony Hawk Ride is a big mess.